second meeting to order for May 14, 2012, to order at 7 o'clock p.m. Everyone please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, call roll, please. Spirit? Here. Clark? Here. Conan? Here. Wolak? Here. Taylor? Cooper? Here. Uh, Audie? Here. Everyone has the agenda in front of them. Are there any additions, deletions, or is there a motion at this time? Motion by Mr. Conan. Is there a second? Support. Support by Mr. Clark. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Any citizen comments on non-agenda items? Any citizen comment on non-agenda items? Hearing, hearing none. We don't have any presentations tonight. Everyone has their administrative reports in front of them. Is there anything anyone would like to discuss? I'm sorry, Mike. Planning Commission, you want me to go on that? Yep. Right. Planning Commission meeting minutes, yes. Well, he, he just has an update as liaison. We have Commissioner Lee and on reports in there as well. Report. That was where I wanted to throw it in. Um, uh, you caught me off guard, Madam President, and I wasn't prepared for it. I had something I wanted to say. I know we're having a problem with one of the Church Street uh, businesses under the special approval land use. Um, I know uh, Dennis is on top of it. It at some point could come to us because uh, as council members because we're having a problem. But as of right now, I don't know where Dennis stands. Um, but just to be aware that we are still having a problem. Okay. That was at Monday's meeting. Sorry. Anything else from anyone? Hearing none? Right, Mr. Sheriff? There was one more. I can't think of what it was. You can do it at council comments. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I apologize. Okay. Everyone has the consent agenda in front of them. Is the approval of the regular council meeting minutes of 3 26 12 payment of bills and employee agreements? Are there any additions, deletions, or is there a motion at this time? So moved. Motion to approve as presented, Mr. Sure. Roddy? Okay. Motion by Mr. Audi. Is there a second? As everybody knows that you do have um, additional bill. Yeah. Bill. Okay. Great. I'll make sure. There's All a motion by Mr. Audi. All second. Support. Support by Mr. Wallach. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. We have no old business tonight, so we'll continue on with new business. First item is CDBG distribution update. Allocation and reallocation. Are there any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, this is the village clerk's agenda item. I prefer it not be, but <laughs> um, we had a meeting this evening at 5:30 with uh, Carrie Fortune, who was sitting in Mr. Mallard's spot tonight because he is. Uh, not at the meeting. Um, she will be probably exiting after this because she probably doesn't want to sit through the whole meeting. But um, we, a few meetings ago, council um, allocated monies um, out of CDBG. We moved around some monies out of 09 and 10 into 11 to get them um, programmed for, um, well, we put them in unprogrammed funds. For a while, no, I'm sorry, we didn't. We allocated them to the Teeth Street culvert, to a land acquisition, and to the downtown sidewalks. Um, the land acquisition um, had a hiccup because we had um, I had sent in an application for an environmental study to the county. Um, the county does not have administrative planning funds left for this year or next year so therefore the environmental study that we were hoping to get paid for by cdbg cannot be paid for by cdbg um, so we we had a meeting tonight um, we had some people in the audience that were in attendance that are near and dear to the project um, 
and we have discussed different options to, to give to council. Um, I'm going to come back to that one because the Teat Street culvert, um, the hiccup with that is um, we had allocated 43000 some odd dollars for that project. Um, it's a viable project with CDBG, they both are, all three of them are actually, but um, it's a viable project. But um, Giffels Webster had, had prepared um, a bridge grant application for bridge uh, grants that were, will be available in 2015. The way that we can use CDBG for the Teat Street culvert is because it's of ur uh, urgent nature, it's a health and safety issue, and it's of ur urgent nature because our um, our load rating has changed on the Prospect Street Bridge. The problem is, is the bridge grant, the funds will not be available until 2015. That takes the urgency out of the CDBG, which was a qualification, which was a qualification for HUD. <laughs> so um, the only project that we have at this moment that we can move forward with is the downtown sidewalks which Scott from Nichols Webster has prepared or is in the process of still preparing a, an application for um, the county um, to proceed with that. Um, we also have issues with the fact that money has not been spent. We have we've allocated for things but because of the hiccups that we're hitting on those projects we kind of fall into that um, that abyss of oh we're not spending money like we're supposed to because you know the, they can't they can't you can't hold on funds we all know that um, tonight I'm asking for council I left I, I asked Carrie to stay because I, I know there's going to be questions that council needs to feel that I am probably unqualified to answer. <laughs> So I want to be sure that somebody who is qualified to answer the questions are here. <coughs> the, where we're at at this moment is um, we need, the council as a, as a board needs to make a decision on how they want to spend this money that we've allocated. Um, we will not know until August if we get the bridge grant. The problem is, is we need to start spending money here in June, and by the end of June. <coughs> On the T Street Bridge, it needs to be allocated, and then you would start spending in July, August. Yeah, and 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 we again, we won't know until August if we have the, the bridge grant. But I, I think I think the bigger question is um, is the and, and again, Scott, I'm going to throw this at you because I don't understand. So I'd like it explain. The grant is a 95-5 grant, right? The, the state or federal, whatever, where we're getting it from, pays 95, the village is responsible for 5%. Um, what we were considering using CDBG for was the engineering costs, because those are those covered in that grant? <coughs> is that also 95-5, or is that? No, those aren't covered at all. Those aren't covered at all. So the hope was that we could take the CDBG money and spend it on the engineering for the Teat Street culvert. But the whole qualifying reason for it was CDBG is urgency, and if you wait till 2015, your urgency is gone. Um, the, uh, the land acquisition, the township, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna probably speak completely on your behalf because I have two board members here who will probably be able to, to fill us in a little bit better, or actually John's here too. Um, it went to their board, um, and I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, please, because I was not there, that the board unanimously approved to um, to investigate the, the possibility of, of um, I don't want to say jointly going in with the village on this purchase, because I don't know if that's the right word, but um, yeah, looking at it together for this <coughs> land acquisition. Um, Yeah, well, we already have, the, the township had a, a steering committee, for lack of a better word, I guess, in place, which was Mr. Lobeck and Mary uh, Bendelecki and Michael Stewart from our board. Um, and I think the council also needs to consider if, if this land acquisition is something that you want to proceed with, if it's something that you want to spend CDBG money on, 
a decision is going to have to be made and a commitment is going to have to be made to do that project. Uh, we're going to need probably one more person from our board to be on that steering committee also. Um, I don't know who wants to explain the hiccups in the committee? I'm beginning to question if we do or not. I mean, we, unfortunately, we found out tonight that, I mean, we, we are in, again, which happens every once in a while, in a crunch to spend money and to get, to get these projects allocated. Um, on a project that we can spend. So I think, I think what, and, and Joe and Sherry were at that meeting also, and Michael, we can, between the four of us, can say that a decision needs to be made by the council which project you're interested in pursuing. If, if, if it's this council's wish to pursue the land acquisition at this time, um, it's a viable project. It's something that there's no guarantees that HUD will approve it, just as there's no guarantees that HUD will approve the Teat Street culvert. You don't know until the application is filed and presented to HUD. Um, you need to go to the next step. With but we need to go to we need to go to the next step with one of the projects. So um, there is um, more to. Um, I don't know what what have I missed. I mean, I'm trying to nutshell it. Well, the first thing we have to do, if you don't mind me, no, please interject. Is we have to reallocate six thousand dollars. We have to do that tonight. Um, or else we're going to get in trouble tomorrow morning. Yeah, we were just told that That's tonight right. at like five. Then the second five? thing we have to do is the master plan has to spend uh, thirty-eight hundred twenty-five dollars by June twenty-fifth because these are old funds that were depleted, but not all the way down. Those are the first two things that have to get done. But our our council doesn't have to do that with the planning. No, <coughs> that part I'm just telling you. Yeah. And then I think we need to decide. I mean, which project it is that we want to go further with. I mean, granted, as Carrie mentioned, or we've discussed earlier, the Teat Street, if we go for the grant, the whole reason for it qualifying was because it was a sense of urgency. If we're saying that we want it with the grant project, it's going to wait till 2015, there takes away a sense of urgency. So we've kind of... May not qualify. Right, we may have already negated that one. So... We only have one left. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Carrie? Um, when do we have to spend the Teat Street culvert or uh, land acquisition money by? We've allocated it into a project. When's a drop dead for spending that money? Are you looking at the, the Teat Street? I think you have 2012 money in. Correct. Well, you've got 11000 of 2012 money in the Teat Street. What do we have in so. 2011? That we were kind of questioning. Our yeah, I don't know that we, yeah, I don't know that you and I are the same thing. What I have down here is $25,070.90. But we have a year and a half to spend that and then we allocate it, right? Or there's something like that. I mean, is any of that money going to be lost? The 2012 money, you, um, without seeing the contract, the contracts in the past have been for two years. We are making some changes this year, so I don't want to promise you that we can get your contract in looking two years. It may be 18 months. Okay. That's the 2012 money. The, um, the other Teat Street funds coming from the 2011 on program funds. You had that in both of them. Okay. Then if the Teat Street funds are coming from 2011, um, my belief would be that it's a two-year grant, which would put you at June 30th of 2013. Okay. So we still have time. I mean, right now, yes. you're, the urgency yes. in this is, exact moment is $6,000. Well, the $6,000 needs to be allocated. That's yeah. 2012 money needs to be allocated because that grant goes to HUD on Friday. Okay. So that's what I need to know tomorrow morning. Probably your second most urgent is you have 2009 funds that are at risk of being taken back we know that number so that. Um, this is where we, we're well the total of the 2009 funds are 13,591.81 but you're in the process of reallocating some of that so those which you're reallocating for see we we did reallocate we reallocated back in March no December I think that when we did all those I thought it was 
that okay, well, we've reallocated twice, and that stuff has been sent in to the county, so I just don't know where you guys are at as opposed to where our council thinks we're setting. Because we made the motions to reallocate, mm -hmm. and they're sent in, but I don't know where right. you guys are but in that process. those still have to be spent in a reasonable amount of time. Yes, you know, oh, no, we, we understand. Yeah. They're, they're set to expire at the end of June, so we're reallocating, we're moving them forward for you, um, but they still need to be spent. Right. They can't well, continue to sit on the books. What, the county is having a problem HUD with is we have a number of communities that have old funds that haven't been spent and HUD only allows you to have 1.5 years um, times of your allocation. Yeah. yeah. So. so we're, all right, like Michael said, you know, $6,000 for sure needs to be allocated. And the reason we have $6,000, let me explain that, is when we got our 2012 allocation, they gave us 38000 um, we allocated and some of the service programs got their money taken back and given back to us because they didn't spend last year's money. So the service, um, so we ended up with $6,000 back, which is fantastic. I mean, for us, it's, you know, I mean, it's not as good for the, for the services, but um, they lost their money, so we got it given back to us. So now we have $6,000 that fell in our lap that we have to reprogram. And one so. of the programs that we can put it in is our sidewalks. I'm just going to say, we must have at least $6,000 worth of sidewalk because we were going to do um, cozy and then whatever repair work we were going to do downtown. Mm -hmm. right. Well, even just fixing those downtown sidewalks like we talked about, we can put it into that project, which is what one we've already allocated money mm -hmm. to. We can add it to that money to make sure that we have enough for that project. And then if there's some left, then we'll we can reallocate it at the end of the project. Yeah. Okay. But that is, I mean, in my opinion, that is a very viable project that we can immediately put it to, and that money is going to be spent this year. And we will have the application in tomorrow, for sure. So can I, can, do you have a motion ready for that? No, because um, that one I didn't know. I didn't know about okay. that like that How until tonight. Because um, I'll make that motion because it didn't make sense to us in the earlier meeting that we needed to do it. No, we got to find. My motion, the other motion. Yep. Okay. Um, to reprogram. No, this would be program. Yeah, this is program. just program. program. Right. So, Carrie, what's a viable motion? Um, to program six, the remaining $6,000 in 2012 CBG funds to your $6,000. I have it down here as CBD sidewalk project. CBG no. no. They have done a CBD. Are those possibly road initials? Or? No? no. Okay. So it's a sidewalk project. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's going to be right. titled however you title it on your application. That well, wasn't our downtown sidewalk project. That's what we've always been calling it. All right. So to reprogram remaining 6,000, 2000, all right. How do we want to say it? 2012. To so program the remaining $6,000 of 2012 funds to the downtown sidewalk program. And that's for the repair of the yes. lifting of the cement? Right. Yes. Okay. Or replacing whichever right. one's available. Okay. So there's a motion by Mr. Stewart. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll support. Support by Mr. Clark. Any other discussion? Is that a roll call? Yeah, I'm sorry. Stewart, you have that written down. Mm -hmm. have Clark, Steve, was that you? Clark? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Clark? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Body? Yes. Conan? Yes. Cooper? Yes. All yeah, A's. All A's. Motion passes. So that's done, and then we just have to draw down on the master plan by June 25th. December. <coughs> but we also need to decide. Okay. All right, yeah. Okay. So now we need to move on to the Teach Street. My opinion, since I was in the CDBG meeting, is correct me if we're not allowed to do this, would be to apply for the grant because it's such a huge match, a 95.5, but in the meantime, proceed with the land acquisition under the CDBG, discuss with the township, and see if it's a viable option, see if we can work out something with them. If one or two things are gonna happen, they're gonna say yes, we can proceed forward and figure out all the final details. If they say no, then we're back to where we were, and we have to come up with another project. project. Okay. You know, and maybe you don't want to hear this, but by then we'll, we should know if it's August if we met the grant qualifications. So I don't know if we get till August. 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 Yeah, she said till 2000. Yeah. 
two years to spend oh, the money. Yes. That's why I asked. Okay. Right, the 2012 money that you've got allocated already to Teen Street, you'll have two years. Okay. Um, if your reallocation was from 2011, then you would have so August so is way, still we're doable. okay to wait till August. So if it falls mm -hmm. through and, and we can't come to an agreement, correct? Right. By August, we'll know if the grants come through and if that's an option. If that's not an option, then the village has to come up with something else. And then the funds that you are looking at for the land acquisition are coming from 2009 and 2010, correct? Right. No. Yeah, but yeah, they're well, yeah, but those are the ones that you're reprogramming. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that has to be done. So that has to be done on a quarter time. So, um, well, so in order for well, us to hold on one second, if you mind, can we hate to do this, but the O nine money we still have some sitting out there. <coughs> can we make the sidewalk project the O nine money because that's going to get done? We don't. We, we don't have O nine money. We have, we have taken our own, our 09 and 10s and reprogrammed them into unprogrammed funds in 11. We took those unprogrammed funds, reallocated them to the Teat Street culvert, the land acquisition, and the downtown yes. sidewalk split. So everything right to now me, now. And, and when I when we did this, I was told that that just moves them into 11, it closes them out, so our 09 and 10 are gone, and there's not right. a risk of losing the money. So it bought us time. It bought that us time. That would seem to be the urgency of why we did it that way. Yeah. I don't believe that it's going to buy you that full year because, again, if you're, you're more than 1.5 yeah. times your <coughs> any annual allocation would be 1 times 1.5 times that $38,000, and you're at risk of losing those funds because we are at risk of losing those funds. So okay. I want you to be careful in that the county is still showing that it's 09, 010, 011 funds. Yeah. That you don't, that you can keep reprogramming them right. forward each right. year to gain another year. Or two. Right. Well, and we knew when we programmed them, when we reprogrammed them in, that we had these three <coughs> viable options. Unfortunately, two of them hit walls, you know, and kind of got sidetracked. Um, so, in order to proceed with what Mr. Stewart said with the land acquisition, we do need to appoint one more person from this council to work with the township council and see if we can go any further in the discussions with it. I don't mind being on it since I've been in all these CDBG meetings if that's how council chooses. I know can Mr. I, Sturt is already on there. Can I ask, I mean, do you guys have anything to add at all? The township? I think the biggest, the biggest hill that we gotta get over is the the fact that that piece of property that you're talking about is contaminated, and you've got to find out what we have to do to get it up to. And, and I can tell you what we've been told from the county. Should I? I guess I, I, guess I want well, to be we sure. Can, we can just appoint yeah. the person, and then that can take place off site. We don't need to discuss all that tonight. Yeah. I mean, we appoint two people, that meeting can take place at a different time. We don't have to keep taking up council time. But we're also that. going to, we also, though, are going. You guys don't meet again until June. Right. What, the third Wednesday or second Wednesday? Third. Second Wednesday in June? You know, now we're <coughs> again, and I don't know that we have that kind of time, do we? I mean, I don't think those decisions yeah. are across. At any point, keep in mind, call me. Yeah. If it's, if it's <coughs> yeah. I mean, we're going to meet again on Monday, the 21st, you know, our, our council, because if the next Monday is Memorial Day. If it's time sensitive, we can call us. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I just know that, I mean, my thought is, and I could be wrong, but my thought is, is that, you know, this land acquisition is just too much for either one of us to do on our own, you know, the township or the village. And that's so. why I think we need to appoint two people from here and meet with them. We can discuss it. We can take it back to our councils and we can make an appropriate decision. What's best for everyone. But we're still looking at, I mean, we would have to call a special meeting too. We may know? be able to fit it in before the 21st. But we need to progress to the next level of appointing a second person right now. So, anyone want to make a motion or anyone want to suggest an alternate person? Did you, you said you I said I will do it. Anybody else wants to make a, you want us to make a motion? Someone has to make a motion, yes. I'll move that uh, President Cooper 
along with Mike Sterrett, work with the township on the land acquisition. Okay. Motion by Mr. Conan. Is there a second? I will. Second by Mr. Audie. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, so that was Conan and Audie. Correct. Um, yeah, I have one more thing about this. So the township, from what I heard, um, said that they liked the option or liked looking into it. How was that worded? Michelle? Yeah, I'm sorry. How did the township pass that motion or what? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I don't know. Does anybody from the township know how you guys worded it? Like you wanted a committee to investigate this possible or something like that? We haven't done anything like that. It's my point that I'm trying to make. You know, we've allocated funds. We set up a committee. Are you guys even interested in us pursuing this? I think that's the bigger question. I, I mean, think Mr. Committee Mr. Conan has already said how he feels about it. I mean, nobody's spending money at this time. Yeah, obviously, that has to come before council, but are we spinning our wheels for nothing, or is it something you do want us to investigate? I'm very, very interested okay. in it. You know, I just don't know what that township's going to do, but right. well, they if they're willing to either. stand up and be counted, I'm very interested. But that's what the committee will figure out. Do you guys have any voice? Or? I think it's got to proceed to the next level just to see where we all stand, and then we can see what our options are. And then we need this now. We need that part. Yep. Show us a budget, what it's going to cost for the project. Well, if we don't know who's buying into it. That's why you got to work with them. Right. Until yeah. we know who buys into it, we... Right. 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 But you're not totally down or against the idea of working on <laughs> something. No, okay. no, no, no. I think we're really in favor. Okay. Just wanted right. to make sure everybody was clear on that. And I want to make sure there's no CDBG funds for the planning of it. Correct. Yes. And there, there would be no cost in the meeting or right. anything like that. No. Um, okay. All right. So is there anything else you need from us tonight, Gary? I don't believe so. As the application for the 6,000, what would be 26,000 for yep. sidewalks? Yep. And then you've already approved the Teeth Street and you've approved your services. Yeah. And then the very foreseeable future I will receive a Teeth Street and or land acquisition application. We hope so, yeah. <laughs> Can we then clarify for sure that we're all good with the 2009 and the other ones that were back that we reallocated from the I think she said she didn't want to talk to Mike. Yeah, well, she I has to get that clear yeah. because that's how I understood it, Steve. Mm -hmm. But now the master plan is not being reprogrammed, so that must be spent. And that's so I need a voucher by June 25th so that it can be processed by June 30th. And plan our grant year begins July 1st. Um, the other 9 and 10 that you're reprogramming into 11, that timeline will be a Yeah. Okay. Knowing that 10, you still. And, uh, well, I don't want to talk us to it, but that, that's who I talked to about it when we did it. So I'm hoping that he still says it's okay because that was what I was told. Is there any other discussion then? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming Thank out. You, Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot for coming out. Right. Okay. okay. Next agenda item, modification of snow plow to fit dump truck. Are there any public comments? <laughs> any public comments? Hearing none, DPW Supervisor Siratowski's agenda item. Yeah, it is. Uh, we had to do some changes to our snowplow that we're going to install on that new truck. Uh, there's some modifications. It's a little bit too heavy for that vehicle. The way Ford's has changed the frame design coming out from the truck. We're going to cut some weight out of it, put some lighter shoes on it, knock off about five, six hundred pounds so we can use it versus buying a new plow. And that's where that stands, about $1,101. Change up. We're going to get built direct on that instead of putting it through Ford Financing. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Should be here any week. So it was cheaper to do this as opposed to buying yes, a whole new plow. Yes, new plow is $6,000. Right. They're, they're trying to sell me a whole mount plow. I'm looking at our plow, it's a whole mount plow. All I have to do is change the way it hooks up to the truck and take some of the weight out of it. Okay. It's going to work out for you. Is there any other questions? Is there a motion at this time? I uh, move to approve the file modifications to fit the new dump truck at a cost not to exceed $1,101. Motion by Mr. Clark. Is there a second? 
I'll support it. Support by Mr. Stewart. Any other discussion? Roll call. <coughs> Clark? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Conan? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Audie? Yes. Cooper? Yes. Motion passes. Next agenda item, Burke and Spencer Street construction, timetable, and bid resolution set special meeting for bid opening. Are there any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, Street Administrator Ballard is out today. So everyone has in front of them the packet that was given to us from Giffels. And they have the suggested bid timeline for everything, correct? On here. The suggestion is to have a special council meeting to open the bids based on the fact that when they need two weeks, they would go ahead and advertise them. If we did vote that way tonight, they would advertise starting tomorrow. We get two weeks for all the bids to come in. We would need a meeting in two days after that because it's gonna be another whole two weeks before we meet again because of the Memorial Day holiday. So we would have to have a special meeting I prefer to have my regular meetings, but it's just not feasible to make the construction schedule as we have. Are there any questions? I'll move to allow wait, 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 wait. I do have a question. Yes. Congress. Is there going to be a meeting on May 29th, Tuesday? No. 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 Okay. Then we have a problem. Because the, the council wants to open the bids at a public meeting, right? We have so our next meeting is the 21st. Because right, but they. So if you look at their um, their schedule on page PC-1, I think I think the schedule provided for a bid opening on the 29th, thinking that that was the Memorial Day meeting, the obviously the day after. I don't know if you were aware that they aren't meeting. We we need to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, I, I'm not saying you can't do it this way. I just want to make sure everybody understands. Council policy has been to open these at a Meeting, we did discuss that, yes. Right. So, so we can do the bid opening separate from a meeting on the 29th and come back on the 31st, but that's, I just want to make sure everybody understands that that, that does deviate a little bit from the prior discussion. Because it should be at a regular no, public no. meeting? It doesn't invalidate it, it's just that I thought the council was. We was have always said that, but however, we are having our next meeting on the 21st, and then we don't come back until after June for our right, next meeting. Right. I'm just right. So I'm just saying this is going to be open at a at Gifles, I'm assuming, or no, it's here. here. It's, okay. at an, it's at an open meeting. We're just setting a special date for it. It'll be a, a special meeting. No, that the, the 29th is the bid opening is scheduled for the 29th. That is not a no, the council awards on the 31st. Yeah, yeah, we award it. The bids are due on the 29th. Right. I don't know why it says bid opening. We know. So you can't. Yeah, we're not going to open the bids on May 31st as well, right? We, no, well, the question, I guess the issue is, if you, if you open the bids, because of the magnitude of the project, and knowing there's a lot of line items in there, mm -hmm. you, typically for something like this, for a, especially a unit price contract, have some time to put the tabulations together. Say if we have, <clears throat> for instance, you have six or seven bidders, and we've seen it before where there's mistakes, or we can sometimes check qualifications of whoever that bidder is. <coughs> and in that two-day period, be able to put all that together, present it to council, and then have a uh, award the bid at that time. Usually, you know, most of the time, it's still yeah the lowest bidder, but there are instances where there could be math errors, where any, it could be a reference issue. So where are the bids opening at? That would be, well, I would prefer to have them here. So we'll have actually two meetings. We're going to open the bids on the 29th, and then we're going to actually award the contract on the 31st? Well, I guess that's, it's up to the, to the village. I mean, for, for bid openings, typically it's not necessary that all everybody needs to be available. Is that correct? Right. right. Yeah. But it's more it's, it's been council's policy to right. have yeah, open at a meeting. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm just trying to work within the time frame of the project uh, getting started and then knowing, you know, trying to make sure we're hitting the schedule prior to anything related to the Armada Fair. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where, that's, that's primarily what the issue is. Right. Otherwise, if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't a time constraint related to having most of the, the bigger um, 
work items done prior to the uh, our main affair, I would just wait until the next board meeting. But with everything, just kind of knowing how the, how we, we proceed for see how this project's going to go uh, from beginning to end and the time um, it's going to take to do the project, I just think we're getting to wait to, to, the, to the June meeting. It's going to really do you want to? Because our meeting's not until June 11th. Do we want to have the meeting instead of the 21st, have it the 29th? It's, that's that's the day after Memorial Day. Yeah. Well, we've already got everything already scheduled and everything for the 21st. We can have a special meeting on the 29th, and it would just be this agenda item as opposed to changing a whole council meeting. <coughs> but because and this then, went out saying that we're going to award it on the 31st, we couldn't award we need, it on the 29th. We need two meetings. We need one on the 29th and on the 31st. Or you could just do the opening here. <coughs> During office hours? Well, the opening, you're not going to take any action right. on the 29th. It's just whether you can do one. Yeah, you'd have to have. Uh, how does, we, how does we, have a big, we had a big old issue with that before. Yes, I personally would rather we just just don't don't here all the time. So, uh, really. is everyone okay with meeting on the 29th just to open them? It shouldn't take too long and then coming back on the 31st where people still have a chance to. What days are we talking? Tuesday and a Thursday. We can schedule them at whatever time is convenient for everyone. And um, can, can we open the biz and award the contract based upon review? Well, as no, as he said, it could be them. math errors. It might not be apples to apples. It could be linear feet against a different. Well, no, the, 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 that'll be all. The, the quantities are the same. Okay. It's just sometimes when they put the not, uh, quantities are the same, but the unit prices they put in, and then they multiply. Simple math error, adding either adding it down or multiplying it. There's no simple math error. <laughs> <laughs> it gets real complicated when they're trying to mess stuff. But we've done that before, where we've told Ed we we approve this bid or this bid once we open them, based upon you check and make sure that right. all the requirements are met. We've done that before. Right. We can't do that on the street. But, but you're you're making a snap decision without. You know what I'm saying, Michael? You, they're, 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 you know, they actually have a, a the contractor um, has a right to withdraw their bid within 24 hours. So you may make an award and they realize they made a mistake or they've got another fish on the hook, they want to move to a bigger project. And you've made it, you know, it could really, again, with the fair coming up, I think Scott's just very concerned that this schedule. Okay, so what are you suggesting? Uh, you know, I hate to schedule two special meetings back to back. You know, I, I I would feel better. I don't think that you have to uh, have a council meeting to open the bids because you're going to get every opportunity on the 31st to answer the questions. You know, to ask Giffels why they're recommending this vendor. All of the due well, we diligence. Need to make sure there's not a quorum here either for it. Just do two special meetings. It's easier. To you. I'm fine. I don't need to have. I don't need to have the special meeting. 31st would be fine with me. Yeah, that would give them a chance to, to look okay, at and it. And you're engineer they're, reviewing. I'm not right. going to come up with something. I mean, you're going to hear a number and think that's great, and they're going to come back two days later and say, well, this is why it isn't so great. Well, Mr. Yeah. Sturrett, Mr. Audi and I can be here for the bid opening just to make sure everything's legit and then send it with them, and then we can all convene on the 31st if that's okay with council. Sorry. Sound okay? Yeah. All right. So now we need to the first. Very good. The first. Island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have two motions here. We're actually going to have to add a third. Or no, we, do we need to make a motion for Mike, Carrie, and I to be at a meeting? No. Okay. So everyone has the two motions in front of them, and we just need a time to have the special meeting on the thirty-first to award the project. Seven o'clock. Okay. So if someone wants to make that first motion. I will to resolve to allow Kipples, uh Webster engineers to advertise for bids for the Burke Street, Burke and Spencer Street construction project. There's a motion by Mr. Wolak. Is there a second? Yep. Yeah. Second. second by Mr. Conan. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Any other discussion? Um, Scott, can, I mean, should we be calling it Burke and Spencer Street construction project, or should we be keeping them separate? Say Burke. We are bidding both. We're bidding both. Uh, right. uh, the 
preferred portion is that they're separate, meaning they can be one could be chosen. So should we say, I mean, should we have, I'm sorry to do this, but should we have two separate bits, one for motions? No, 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 all right. So there's a motion by Mr. Wallach, a second by Mr. Conan. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Yes. Sorry. Oh, okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes. In front of you is a second motion, and that's to set the special council meeting. Resolved to set the special council meeting for May 31st, 2012, at 7 p.m. Bids for the Burke and Spencer Street. Construction project. Motion by Mr. Wolak. Is there a second? Um, we have a support. Hold yeah. on, let me wait. get a support. Sorry, support back for you, Mr. Robbins? Sure. Okay. Can we add in there uh, seven? Does it have a typo? Does it make any sense? So, especially two open bids. Just put two open before bids. Is that okay? Is that okay with you, Mr. Wolak? Yes, definitely. All right, sorry, no, not That's two open, two to award. To award. award. Is that okay with you, Mr. Wolak? Right. Okay with you, Mr. Robbins? Sure. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. <coughs> passes. I have one question. Yes. Up before. Uh, the day you're going to, on the 29th, that you're going to open the bid, mm -hmm. is that going to be a posted event? Bid opening? Yeah. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Have to be okay. Okay. Four people show up, <coughs> we're going to have a problem. Someone's going to have to. Why don't we post it? Can we? You can. It doesn't you have to, though. You want to do it at noon? Or? I post them just so it's clear. I just want to make sure we're coming. Oh, yeah, I don't want to have something right. come up that messes the whole right. chain of events up. That's fine. So we don't need to make a motion for you to post it. Okay. I promise I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'll hold you to that, that one. Day. Come on out here. All right, next agenda item, Armada AMVETS Wood Clover Sale Memorial Day Parade Clarification of Special Event Permit Requirements. Are there any public comments? Oh, it's Armada Alliance Wood. I read what was on here. Mr. Boyke, oh, you had a public sorry. comment? Yeah, this is, uh, well, my name is Ken Boyke, and I'm here uh, presenting for, on behalf of the Armada Agricultural Society, otherwise known as the Armada Fair. I want to thank the council and you guys for taking consideration of having that project done before the fair so that uh, it greatly impacts the whole community here, and I believe that's what we're all about. Um, your, this uh, new uh, policy that you passed, I could understand, I guess, if you were doing something on village property, such as the village park, to, you know, looking into this without hiring counsel yet, I was hoping to get more clarification, that it, it appears that this is going to be very burdensome for all the nonprofits in the, in the whole community here. We've already tried to establish a good working relationship, um, and our events are already, you know, covered by our discharge, you know, permit that we work with, uh, you know, we annually have to apply of all of our events that are coming on. But reading through all of your paperwork for this, uh, ourselves as the Agriculture Society, we're on private property. It's been 140 years this year that this event's been going on and uh, unnecessary to uh, have to work through this uh, type of stuff. And I believe this gives you quite a bit of policy and it's more regulations. Um, I, we're very much uh, not in favor of this as we speak right now. That's why I'm here tonight in opposition to this. Uh, you know, for us, unless you can give me clarification that we're exempt, because the only way that I can see it would be the impact on any of the you know the roads. And if we're going to go on that impact, are we going to require all the the sports sporting events every week? You know, when they have a football game or a basketball game, that would be required. Is the Armada flea market going to have to be required because there's more traffic that goes through town at that point? Are we going to reach out because there's going to be a special 5K <coughs> marathon on the new bike trail? Um, I just, I have big concerns about your new policy. I think it would be good just for, like I said, your park property and stuff like that, but as far as all the other nonprofits on the way we've been operating for eons, uh, I do not think this is a favorable thing for, all the, for us to have to go through. 
if I can go through the line items and stuff I have problems with, I'd be happy to. If you'll be here in public well, comments. we do have a time limit. So. Okay. All right, thank you. Are there any other public comments? We're, we'll address it after. Yes. Hi, my name is David Kerr. I'm representing the Armada Lions Club. Um, K-E-H-R-E-R. Okay. Um, obviously, we do not have the tenure that the Armada Agricultural um, Society has. We've been around since 1941. Um, we have several events that take place in town. The Santa Day, when we bring Santa in, is going on for the past 50 years. Goodfellas paper sales for the last 50 years. The Halloween parade for the last 50 years. Holidays that we have inside of town, um, 20 years. And the lighted parade for 14 years. We too have some serious concerns about the uh, additional rules, regulations, burdens um, that uh, have been imposed. And if these provisions remain in effect, um, we may have to cancel all of those events that we put on because we're not going to be able to take on that additional liability. Thank you. Are there any other additional public comments? Any public comments? Okay, hearing none, this is a village clerk's agenda item. Well, well actually, what, it, what was put on for originally was because the um, Lions Club and the AMVETS both uh, put in their applications for their special events, so that was, was on here just for that approval. So we kind of got a little off on what was <laughs> actually on the agenda. The clarification and definition of special events was my questions, but um, the Lions Club filled out um, for their uh, <coughs> white cane and for, well, just the white cane, which is scheduled for May 25th as a four corner sale between the hours of 10 and 6. Um, and then the AMVETS put in for the Memorial Day Parade, which is May 28th, will step off at 10. I believe that takes off, I'm not sure, from the AMVETS Hall, Howard? You know? yes. All right, from the AMVETS Hall. And then they also wanted to do, the Abbots also wanted to do a four corner fundraiser May 18th, 19th, 20th. That's the Lions. Oh, that's the Lions. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Abbots was May 25th. The Lions was May 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, so that's really what the agenda item was. My clarification, I mean, I'm sure that, that everybody else has more questions, but my clarification came from uh, phone calls that I got regarding. Um, the church called me the, the Catholic Church because they want to do a garage sale. You know, obviously this is a new policy. There's going to be bumps and hiccups. I know I keep using that word, but it seems like that seems to be what everything is, is bump and hiccup. Um, they were going to be having a grand church property. Does that qualify? Um, uh, oh, what was the other thing? Um, I don't remember what the other one was. Um, you're talking about 4H 5K run? No, that we don't have an application for yet. Um, the pastor from my church. Yeah, asked, me, asked, yeah. And then I asked the office also, again, that with all events on private property, they would not need to fill out this form. So that kind of leads me back, if you don't mind, going to the um, Mr. Goyke's comment. If it's on private property, my take is that is you don't have to fill it out. I just let, would like to have, because so many people come, just to let us know what you do under the sewer <laughs> discharge permit and what you do under the police permit or police contract. We are made aware, in my opinion, that again, something of seven, that there's an event going to happen. Same with uh, the gentleman that came in to talk to us about running the soccer tournament. You know, it's nice to know. It's on the But I know it's nice to know when the big events are coming case we do need to have additional officers to handle something um, but if it's on private property I think our hands are tied personally but I mean if you do anything off private property then I think you have to fill this form well like the 4-H um, I think it's Alero came in and um, to talk about a 5k run that they want to do uh, it's cut stepping off I believe from the fairgrounds can do yes know? it is yeah um, uses Village streets, so that you know that's why she came. Um, and you know, I've got to call her tomorrow about the color back. She came in or called after I left today. I'd like to add one more thing though. I don't necessarily know, I'm not an insurance person, how much it costs to get a million dollar policy. 
but I know even the Armada Baseball Association, before we can play on any of the fields in the community, that's the school, Ambets Field, the Burville Field, um, Ray Township Field, the Armada Township Field, we have to get certificates of a million dollars and we provide those to the, the appropriate uh, businesses or, or um, landowners. So I don't know uh, what the lines are referencing the cost. Is there a cost? There is. How much Absolutely. does it cost? Well, if they already have an insurance policy, it doesn't cost anything Correct. to extra identify the village. So actually, an additional insured can cost money. One of the problems with the provision and the way we wrote it, which I disagreed with, was you have to be an additional insured, not just a certificate. An additional insured puts us on there as an additional insured, and that usually costs anywhere from $25 to $100 per event because you can't do a blanket additional insured usually under the new ISO language. So that could be anywhere from 25 to 100 per event. And usually you specify, if you look in here, the provision applies for the following activities May 18th, 19th, and 20th. They would have to get an additional insured certificate for. Or they could just do it for a whole year and pay for it once and it's well, good for the whole year. And not necessarily. Most companies won't allow that because they're taking on a larger risk then that they don't know what exactly they're going to do. Look at this one from the Armada Lines Club. If you look at it under the description of op um, at the bottom, you'll have the certificate holder right above that. It'll say event date. The other problem, the, the other problem with even requiring the insurance is if we don't have it on a claims made policy, it's worthless anyway if they decide to drop the insurance or cease operations. Well, I mean, sure. well, we already have a certificate of liability insurance from the Lions Club that was turned in by okay. their application. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was a cost. I mean, I, I have no idea. That was turned in with the application. Do you, do you, why don't you know? Um, yeah, there's a cost associated with that. Okay. So, yes, but I mean, that's not the blanket. I mean, I, I've, I've got the dates for um, all the way through 2020 for you guys. Well, would you, I mean. All of our events. But I mean, it's, the insurance is one aspect. The other aspect is the uh, identification and whole armless agreement. That is, I, that's the bigger issue. Okay. Um, that agreement does not end at the termination of the special event permit. That carries on. So that, that's an issue. Um, yeah, we're going to let Jeff talk about that when we discuss it. Okay, perfect. So, well, I, Can we? I just, I, I'm just curious because because I have it, so that's right, right. I thought if there's an issue, I don't want to really proceed with it. Right, we had anything. to get that in before, um, you know, to fit within there. I mean, yeah. but obviously we have additional issues on top of that. I mean, we wanted to get that in so we could at least hold that mm -hmm. fundraiser. Okay, because what I, I know um, the chief and I both, I, I think you were in there too, talked to Jerry when right. came in and because um, he's the one that turned everything in. And we told him then, if you know your, your dates, and I, because at, at this point, I think his concern was the dates, and what if somebody comes in, right. you know, on a date that you guys always do something. Yeah. Well, I know, but that right. doesn't know that. Um, so, um, I told him, I said, you can always turn something, in, you know, turn to, if you know the whole year, give it, you know, turn it in in January, but I, I, we're getting on different issues now that you guys are talking about it, because when right. we talked, that's where I thought we were, but. Um, we, re we really need to revise this, I think. You well, know, and, it was and we've always said that we will revisit win. it as we go. I mean, okay. it is something brand new. But I'm speaking now. I understand that. Okay, well, thank you. We need to revise it, and, you know, maybe we put a moratorium on it for three months and get a committee together, or we can look at revising it over the long run with the cooperation of the nonprofits. Alliance Club, the Invest, Seedly. Well, we well, already got the, the as, as far as I knew coming in here tonight, the Alliance Club was fine because everything was turned in as it was supposed to be. We met, they met with the chief, they turned everything in, chief signed off on it, and it came before you, which is exactly what the policy is. I didn't realize there was a problem until... We don't, we don't have an issue for us selling something on the corner. I mean, we don't, that, that is not an issue with us. Okay. What's an issue with us is the Halloween parade, the holidays, the country Christmas lighted parade, mm -hmm. the Santa Day parade, 
those are issues for us. What, because what's the issue, though? Because the Lions have been really one of the best nonprofits for turning in their insurance indemnity. Ab we turn in the yeah, insurance. You do. Insurance Fantastic. isn't the issue. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The insurance isn't the issue. The issue is the indemnification that is on top of this. Okay, well then, that right, is then the we'll issue. let the attorney right. address that. Okay, all right. And yeah, we don't necessarily have a problem with anything else. Okay, I well, mean, it's, I, that's it's what really, I'm saying. Right. The lines have been yep. slippery. Okay, <laughs> first of all, you guys are fantastic. I, I did but, receive so. a call on Thursday night. I attended their meeting. They voiced a lot of concerns to me. I answered all their questions. However, the indemnification, I did talk to Jeff and I brought him up to date on the issues that you guys had and wanted me to bring up with him. Jeff, did you want to discuss the the things um, I told you about? Yeah, we, you know, we never intended this to be a, a, a hindrance on any nonprofit event. The indemnification has been pared down to a page and a half. It's it's not really uh, that burdensome. Specifically, as to the point of why it continues, you never get sued the day of the event. So if this ended with the event and you took the position that the agreement ends when the event ends, there's no no duty to indemnify so that when we get su sued up to three years later, I can't go to the uh, event sponsor and say, here's my indemnification, defend the taxpayers of the village, because you'll say, well, that ended with the event. So that's why it always says, and it's pr in fact, it's, it's in the, uh, the bid documents that, that giffles. I mean, you look at any well-drafted or well-crafted indemnification, it always survives the termination of the agreement or the termination of the event in this case, because it has to. You don't get sued the day of the event. You can be sued up to three years later. So that to that point, that's why it goes on. Um, what, what happens if the group ceases operations? They cancel their insurance policy it, and they dissolve. Then, then, then they're, we, we're like yeah. anybody else. We're standing in line as a creditor to whoever went out, you know, out of business. I mean, that's very difficult to anticipate. I mean, the track record of the Agriculture Society and the AM, yeah, uh, Lions is pretty good. I, I hope that they're not going away anytime soon. Um, I'm not saying that we can't, you know, I, I'd be happy to talk about the indemnification, but again, I, I just want everybody to understand it's a pretty standard practice. Um, you have to remember that if someone was injured, let's say a child falls off a float or uh, a thousand and one risks that can happen in these large events, um, the village taxpayers are picking up the expense of defending the village. And again, you got to balance that against the value to the, you know, the, the community for, for allowing these events. So, I mean, it's never easy to get these things signed, but the reality is, you all know we live in a very litigious society. People do get hurt at these events, some severely, um, and I wouldn't be doing my job, nor would this council be protecting the res residents and taxpayers if they didn't try to. Uh, mitigate that risk financially. So that's why it's in there. I guess if council doesn't think it's necessary, obviously insurance is, um, for the reason you brought up, Harry, that uh, insurance is oftentimes more important than indemnification. Indemnification is just a con contractual obligation. Insurance, we have uh, an insurance company that has to provide a defense to the additional insurance. So, in the scheme of things, which one would I go for? If I had to take a pick, I'd ask for both of them, but I'd make sure I had insurance. Mr. Horsey, doesn't that indemnification, if there is insurance in place at the time of the event, doesn't that indemnification follow through with the insurance company, the subject of the insurance company? It should. It just depends on the endorsement for contractual obligations. Some policies have it. For instance, again, referencing the engineering one it's required under the engineering agreement that it does track in other words if you indemnify the village it, it must be in your insurance policy um, I haven't looked at what um, Lions and other organizations have been producing but standard GL it sometimes will but yeah it it, it's not a guarantee but you can get that type of policy. some of the nonprofits will have a package like a bot policy and it won't follow a completed or contractual the final thing we need to look at too is why does council have to approve everything? 
four corner fundraiser. Can't we put it in either to the clerk or the lease chief to approve? I mean, it's a pretty simple thing. I don't think we need to get our nose involved in every little four corner. Well, the reason why it came before us is we are the elected officials and we are the last person to make a call. The other, in, um, for instance, police chief is an employee. Okay. I mean, we are the ones that hold the, the onus to the residents. They're the ones that elected us, and it's our opinion that they respect. Not that they don't respect your opinion, but, well, um, the, but it, it's, it's, it's I us. Think the, I think the other thing, the way, the way I look at it is, is when some of these things come to me, I expect them to be a sanctioned event that are sa that's sa sanctioned through the council. And it doesn't leave it to me to make a decision whether, whether one group should have the event or another group should have the event. You know, if, if I guess I can go either way. If you develop a policy that says that, you know, if they meet all the steps, then I can make the final decision, you know, that's fine. Um, you know, so, and obviously some of this is, you know, it's necessary for me to know what day certain things are. Uh, the white cane event it was a perfect example. Uh, the white cane event, as Mr. Goyke pointed out to me, is always the last weekend of April. I did not know that. Apparently it's because I live outside the village, but um, I did not realize that it was the last weekend of April. The school put in and followed the process that they also wanted the event. They, they followed the procedures, they were approved. So when we ended up with the Lions and the kids out there, you know, that was problematic. Uh, I've told the fair board, and, and the fair, that I can easily tell when the fair is. Um, but apparently we've got a barbecue and uh, car show coming up that I was advised about over at the Cozy. Um, if, and the, the fair board can do this, they can, they can provide us a list, and they have provided us a list. They can provide us a list in the first week of January, give us all the events, and we can plug it in on the calendar. Same with the Lions. As a matter of fact, I think I have it. I don't have glasses, so I assume that's what it is. Um, but we can plug that in uh, as well. The planning of it is, is great. How the council decides on what to do, on whether or not they adopt a final policy, and within that final policy, you want to leave it to me to make the final decision as long as all the other steps are made, fine. Uh, my only reasoning that it, I thought it should come before the council is so that the council knows about the events and the council sanctions the event. How do you feel, Mr. Cronin, all around the room? Well, first of all, that the nonprofits, uh, the Lions Club, the Anvets, the Lioness, these are all people that make our community a, a better place to live in. So we want to work to make this thing easy, easy for them. Um, I think for a lot of the recurring events, uh, I don't think it needs to come to the council every time. Um, the Memorial Day Parade, um, different things. You know, I don't, I don't think it needs to come to us every time. The holidays, uh, you know, we've all, we always have those events for a long, long time now. As new people, like you've had, like the school, a lot of times because they have no more organizations, adds new things that we probably want to come to us. Also, I would add, even though you have agreements with the sewer department and, and with the police department, as far as this special <coughs> events policy, that fares on private property. I don't think you need to fill that out at all. So we're glad to see you. That's what I'm asking for clarification yeah. of. Well, Dave, I, I want to just add, though, when you were saying, I mean, we've always been told by our attorney that, you know, the council has to be very careful to not pick and choose who they who they support and who they don't support. No offense to, believe me, no offense. But I mean, we have, you know, there's other things, so you have to be very careful 
Not to say, I mean, we know that these events, we know that the, you know, the Lions are a wonderful organization. We know that the AMS yeah, is a wonderful organization. But I don't think we need a w. Memorial Day parade to come to us every year. But, it, but according to the way the policy that was unanimously approved by this council, the way the policy is, is that all well, events that, that well, this is that also a new policy that we're working with. And but let's not, remember why the policy was created, Dave. That's a whole lot uh, harmless if there's something. Uh, well, no, it was created because we got accused of not being fair. So this I is, thought this policy was created because you had gone to the clerk's meetings. You had found that this was good business practice that other communities were using, and you had brought this to us as an improvement to our community. No, I did. I did. That's no, why no, I no. thought this I did, was, was not that because of any group in our made up. Well, let's just let that me. That was my understanding. Hold on, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to, I just no. want to make it clear no. that this happened so everybody is required to do the same steps. So you're not making a preferential treatment over from, to, from one nonprofit to another because you have to be very, am I right, Jeff? You have to be very careful not to do that. Okay. Again, I, mean, I, I, I agree with I you 100 percent, but I think it can be that same way without every year approving the AMBETS parade as a council and the, the Lions Club White. So you're thinking? I mean, you're thinking that a better way to do it then is just to let the police chief. Uh, you know, I think everything don't fit into the same. Or Nick, but we, I think these is, recurring things, they don't have to come to us. This is a first time. come, first serve date basis with the police department. I spoke at the Lions meeting. They said in January they're going to be turning in all their dates. Okay, we can six. compile a list and then we all approve that. them all in one, yeah. in one swoop. That way we all have all the information, that if that's good. easier for council as well. Mm -hmm. Or the grand scheme of things, it doesn't take time. Right. 30 seconds to just everybody is, knows about it and mm -hmm. we move on. Right. It so could even go through in consent. It yes. could go through under consent. Yeah. Yeah. See, I thought you asked you what I thought. I am. And then when you say what you think, every, you know. <laughs> Dave, I'm, 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 not, I'm not jumping on you and I apologize if that's the way it came up. I'm just, I'm trying to be very careful. You know, like when I Mr. Adi said, you know, that either I should make the decision or Howard should make the decision. I'm not a voting member of this council. Yeah, I'm I, not, don't, I don't think I don't that's want to quite, I don't think that's quite what Mr. Adi met. Um, and again, you're pretty important part of this because you're the one that brought it to us. Yeah. Had that been for you, we wouldn't be talking about this. No, we've heard minutes. <laughs> okay. But you brought it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. Mr. Wallach, do you have anything to add? I think uh, history is history. Yeah. Everybody's done a good job uh, of uh, you know, making us aware of the facts in the past. And uh, in previous years, which is dating back to 45 years at least to, to my knowledge, they've always come to the uh, police chief, you know, and uh, I can accept that in order to As long as they fill out the paperwork, do that, just turn it in. We're not going to turn them down because they're good members. Of I don't think I don't think that's their concern though. Is yeah, turn well, down. It's well, that's that's steps. true too. But I, I know what you're <coughs> saying about the insurance on that. I mean, if it is a burden like that, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what the answer is. Well, one thing, if I can, one thing that I see that would be problematic with just having the chief do it or just have the clerk do it, someone's going to be accused of being biased. Oh, you didn't approve ours because you don't like our group. You like their group better. Well, this record comes to the whole board. It's there's okay. definitions that they can follow, and, you know, uh, or base as such. But if two uh, put it in at the, for the same date, same date, it's going to be up to somebody to yeah, well, somebody make to make decision. that decision. First come, first serve. Then, and know, we've already hit that. Well, mm -hmm. I think some of it. I think maybe Howard had a good idea. If we can get with our nonprofits and maybe try to get this thing done in January because with some of the organizations that are national organizations they only have certain like the Knights of Columbus like it's the a national uh, day you know it, it you know it's like those Tootsie Rolls you're seeing Tootsie Rolls till you're green in the face because it's on every corner throughout the state printer or the white canes or or, or the clover leaves yeah, or the poppies so it, now, 
like for instance the other day with the school the band could have taken maybe a different day I'm just saying because they're not tied and, and maybe they couldn't have but they were already from my council so they but so it'd be nice if we could get everybody somewhat educated and we get this master list in, into the chief and uh, plot it out the, the township does it for the baseball fields. There's a schedule yes. meeting with uh, Matt Getzinger, <coughs> and, and all the baseball clubs come. They sit down. Uh, there's a, a master schedule. I've never. I, I think. I don't know if I've seen. But I've, I've been at the it. meeting, yes. and and you sit there and you plot out who's going to have the fields win. Right. Apparently, it works because they've been using it for right. at least several years that I know of. Mr. So, Clark, do you have anything to add? Social so on the internet. No, I, I mean I don't think it hurts. For us all to see this, and it could be on a consent agenda. Just everybody knows about it. And again, that way, we can say if he made the decision, mm -hmm. it's this council that made the decision. Perfect. Okay. Harry, anything more to add? I really think we ought to leave it up to the chief or another full time employee or elected official. It just make it easier if we have an event where maybe if you want to have a memorial downtown or. If something comes up like a fundraiser, you want to do a, anything in a quick time frame, if it doesn't fall between a council meeting, it could take longer. I think there's just so many unforeseen things where it would be easier to put someone in charge of it to approve them. How about but, making special ones like that well, to the chief? But then and we're then not the rest being, goes to council. I don't know if anybody knows a special event to get I don't think so. Days. I don't no. think so either. But, but the park's down the park. The, the park, park is a separate. That's but a, but I'm yeah. saying you have the authority to approve it, correct? Or who, no, who it goes authority? to Parks Commission. Park Commission. Sure. Maybe the, just the Clovers can go to the not Clovers, I'm sorry, the Four Corners. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's being special. But um, the, the Four <coughs> Corners can go to the Chief, but events that are maintaining the whole area, maybe that's something else. Well, it's something that we can think about for the sure. next. Sure think about we, it. I mean, we have one week till our next meeting. It's, but, I, I, like I don't it. think that we should completely address the We haven't, but I'm just trying to move to the next part of it. Yeah, so. yeah. We're having dinner order then. My, my question to Jeff would be, um, Harry, you mentioned that some of these are $25 to $100 in the certificates. They can be. Is there, can we go to the one that doesn't cost money? Would we still be covered? A or certificate of insurance? Oh, no. I mean, if they had to buy a policy for the village, it'd be a lot more expensive. And that's why... Is there a cheaper method to get the same? Yeah, you can ask for a certificate, not a additional insured. Yeah, but the problem is, if you're just looking that they have insurance, it doesn't. It doesn't. It does, they won't the provide it. They won't insure. They won't defend the city. You see what I mean? And I'm not sure that's what you're referring to here. But as I understand it, if you just say, get, show me proof of insurance, mm -hmm. if you, if the village and this council and Mr. Saratowski and Mr. Smith, all of who are going to be covered by that policy, unless you are a named additional insured, you will not be provided a defense to that lawsuit. Hmm. It's to defend that organization. So what, just to the property, the baseball literally plays at every field. And when I had to do it, I got to say as an additional insured. Correct. So if I were, paid that much money for every policy, I never wrote them another check. No, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think they the typically. Doesn't, it doesn't cost anything for the school. And it depends what kind of policy you have. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of areas. But it, that it, might not be necessary. If you, if you, let me put it this way if you're a big organization, I guarantee you they're going to add you as a, I shouldn't say guarantee. In many, many cases, they will add you as an additional insured at no cost to the organization. Okay. I can't speak for Alliance. I can't speak for Ambus. Again, the idea is not to make it hard for these people to operate. Um, that so, was never our intention. Right. So I, I just don't know what the cost is. I really okay. don't. But I would recommend that you're addition, you, you are additional insurance. Okay. Again, you got to keep in mind, always prepare for the bad event. No one thinks about the bad event. Everybody focuses on the fun you're going to have until someone gets hurt, and then it becomes a problem. You know what I mean? That, that's the way risk managers look at the situation. Mr. Kurt, right? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't want to mess up your name. I apologize. Um, did your attorney say that they didn't like the the one day thing or the hundred? The indemnification that was the I mean, that's the main problem that you know we've got with that. But your adult. attorney said no. To Correct. That. Okay. We went to Lions International. It was a um, who is you know writes our 
ultimate policy on um, for our insurance for the club but that was the problem that they had for that particular thing and again it's you know it's not a problem for us selling something on the corners or anything like that mm -hmm. it's more of a problem where we have you know public events if we've got the Halloween parade and a kid trips over the manhole cover breaks his you know face I mean it's it's those types of things that they you know and then doesn't report it for a month Okay. So that's where, you know, they came back to us and said, listen, we can't do that. You know, unless somebody in the club wanted to take it on personally, and I don't think we have anybody at the Pardon. club who says, yeah, sign me up, I'm going to, you know, do that. No, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, we, we, in case, I know most of you were not here when we had talked about this, but Richmond and Romeo also have a special event policy form to fill out. And I wonder if that's maybe, what this was based maybe on. we should check into theirs to see if they have identification. They do. All that pretty much mirror yeah. yes yeah. I mean the indemnification they did have indemnifications this one though was written by Jeff this what I'm just saying maybe we should look at it and see if what they have because the Lions and Romeo correct yeah, yeah they, they threw on a huge event right but that's very similar to the Armada Fair that's held on right. private property right. oh it is everything's all okay. you know that so that's not the issue okay you know when they do the parade in town the Peace um, Festival Parade that's co-sponsored from the uh, village of Romeo. Okay. So they don't need any additional okay. um, requirements on that. Okay. Yeah, that's the same for Richmond and Romeo. Exactly, same for Richmond. Yeah, I talked to Richmond and Romeo. Right. Okay. 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 So if you guys want to co-sponsor, I think that, I mean, that may be something that we would be open to where it is, you know. Well, the only Romeo problem line. is that once we co-sponsor one event, we're going to get co-sponsoring for every event. And that's just right. something that we can't yeah. put on the village taxpayer's liability. Oh, right. yeah. We can't, we can't do that. Well, that's what the other ones do. I'm sorry? That's what Richmond and Romeo does. But they have theirs on private property. No, the, the, the parades, parades, the good old days, and the, yeah, I mean, it's, and so we're, we're talking about So they're picking and choosing with it unless you don't do this whole policy. It's, it's You're following their policy in that aspect. If, if. I don't know that we I should talk to Richmond and Romeo. I'm not yeah. exactly sure what they do. So yeah. I think for us to say what they do, I don't think we know. I mean, well, you might know. I don't know you guys talk to <laughs> yeah. I would just have to say on that we'd have to just look into it more and figure yeah. out what our options are. I mean, this right. is a new policy. We yeah. said we were going to look at it. We, uh, you know, it's, you know, we said we were going to make, little, I think I said, make little notes on the side and review it. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to make mistakes. We might have to correct things. Right. But we have I to mean, we do, we did get a lot of information tonight from the not-for-profits that came. We did get a lot of notes for tonight. Um, we do need to move on, though, because yeah. it is getting late. We do have four motions in front of you. Jeff made a couple changes, or three. three. He made a couple changes. Um, the, ch yeah, the, the changes are just to recognize that we're not approving the event, we're approving the application for the event. So, for instance, on motion number yep. one, resolve to approve the application by the Armada AMBETS for a special event permit on May 25, 2012, between the hours of 10 and 6 p.m., 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., for four corner fundraising. So moved. Okay. Motion by Mr. Sturt. Is there a second? No, I was just <laughs> motion by Mr. Sturt. Is there a second? Oh. Second by Mr. Audi. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. The second one there. Uh, I move to approve the application by the Armada oh. Ambulance for a special event permit May 28, 2012, uh, for the Memorial Day Parade. Motion by Mr. Conan. Is there a second? Support. Support by Mr. Clark. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. The last one. Uh, I move to approve the application with the Army Alliance Club for the special <laughs> event permit on May 18th, 19th, and 20th, 2012, between the hours of 8 and 7 p.m. for a four-corner fundraiser. Motion by Mr. Conan. Is there a second? Support. Support. Was that you, Mr. Wallach? Yes. Support by Mr. Wallach. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. We will be rediscussing this at another meeting. It'll be on our agenda, so you can just watch for it, and we will let you know what happens.
Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. The next agenda item is flood lighting quotes for municipal parking lot. Are there any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, this was Trustee Ballard's agenda item. DPW supervisor is gone as well. All right. Mr. Ballard was going to obtain pricing to change the lighting in the parking lot. He received the following quotes that everyone sees on there. This does not include um, installation. And he is recommending Kuchenmeister lighting and electrical supply for a price of $150 with a three-day delivery for the, I have no idea, photo cell and lamp. Everyone so has moved. it there. <coughs> so there's a motion by Mr. Audi. Is there a second? Support. Support by Mr. Clark. Any other discussion? It would just be nice to know how much the install would cost. We don't know. Well, how's volunteer could do it? <laughs> now we did. <laughs> now we did. <laughs> Mark's going to hold the letter. <laughs> well, I guess the bottom line with that is that um, if it's over, it's a morning's got to go to us for approval. Yes. Okay. okay. It's going to be a roll call vote. Body? Yep. Clark? Yes. Conan? Yep. Cooper? Yes. Sturrett? Yes. Wallach? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Bike racks downtown. Are there any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, Park Commissioner Audi and Trustee Clark's agenda item. Well, I volunteered to make a couple of uh, drawings. I think for the talk before, we kind of wanted to uh, put them in an area with the least amount of uh, impact pedestrian-wise and car-wise. So I came up with the idea of around the corner at Licks on the side street there, uh, Church Street. You've got about 12 feet there that uh, really not supposed to park in anyway. Uh, thought was you could put uh, parking barricades to like extend the curb line out there to protect the bike racks. And you could put a normal type bike rack that would load just from one side. And with the bike rack and bikes in place, I estimated you'd probably have uh, about seven feet from the back of the bikes to the side of Lick's building, which should be quite a bit room for pedestrian traffic. I wouldn't want to do that on the on Main Street. I think that would block things up too much. And as you can see, I know it got discussed about the, the, the garden out front. You've got a lamp post there, uh, some other things in the way. You just really, I mean, when you think about it, you don't have a whole lot of room there. Uh, and the other area, I didn't put a bike rack in it, it was over at the uh, opposite <coughs> corner. The wellness clinic, we've got a large band of grass there uh, that could facilitate a bike rack uh, crossways or, or the other way in there. Uh, maybe you'd want to pour a slab that the bike rack could sit on so grass could be cut easier. But again, just a couple ideas. And I think we can get by with, like, all the conventional type bike racks. And uh, maybe in the long run, it'd be cheaper. And maybe something we just want to try, especially the one by Licks. Just see how it how it goes. See if it's used. Yeah. I had initially wanted to put one by Licks because the majority of the bike parking is going to be for the restaurants on that uh, corner. The other thing we can do is if we get a good heavy duty rack and have DPW put it in, we can move it in the future if we do put in a parking lot at one of maybe designated bike parking area. Um, the best spot really if we are going to put bike racks downtown is right on the corner of that building because there's really not enough room to park anything but maybe a tiny smart car there. Um, we're not really giving up any parking. It won't really impact the pedestrian movement. That's where I like to put it. So how many bikes do we have for? Um, we could put eight. We should be able to put a rack in there the whole day. Just out of curiosity. Do we already have a bike rack somewhere? We've got a bike rack down the park. I don't know yeah, if it's being used. I mean, if you wanted to a test, a test yes. steal it from there, we could maybe three parking uh, uh, blocks. Right, like what we have out here. Out here, mm -hmm. and set up this area and Let's see how it works. And all Sunday we had 120 bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the gray, anyhow. Nice uh, bike. I don't know that. No? No? Bicycle? Yeah. 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 Oh. I thought yeah. you were joking around. No, because no. I had three the same thing. No, um, but um, we do have money. It is good for our business guys. So yeah. they, they do sell the bike.
the, the other so. area I did look at is right yeah. in front of the Lions Hall where just the subway shop kind of sticks out from it. There's about four and a half feet there. You got sure. room for maybe a couple of narrow bike racks. The subway is another place that a lot of people stop at. So I thought, if anything, this would be a cheap way to just try it. So I like the idea, personally, yeah. to at least I try it. Yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah, this I better than uh -huh. drilling a bunch of holes and putting stuff right. in a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to test it. I, I'm with you. I don't like Main Street at all, except possibly by the Lions Hall. They're like, mm -hmm. this is pretty good. I hadn't heard that thought before. I think that's kind of good. Want to have DPW move it and give it a whirl? Do we have a racks to put in there now? Well, it's sitting out, the one sitting out the park, oh, and I don't know that it's used. Not as you know used. what? That might be a good little test. Either way, we have money in the budget. Um, for we can always see what happens and then look we'll at purchasing one. Mm -hmm. We did get donated. Just, just to let everyone know, Kent Lawn Care is going to be uh, cutting the lawn in the park for the three this year. So oh, we've got nice. a Thank you for nice little windfall. Um, and then, so we're going to be under budget anyway. Oh, good. Is that Phil? Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, thank you, Phil. He's charging us there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> the board member. <laughs> no, no, I'm in charge. That's right. Let's get past that. We can add cigars in these meetings. All right, let's <laughs> move on. All right, I don't think we do. We need a motion for that just to move by. No, nope, I'll have a CW. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Clark. That'd thank you, good. Mr. Audi. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, next agenda item, sewer violation notice from DEQ. Are there any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, Sewer Commissioner Sturrett, this is your agenda item. This would be mine. Um, this came, we got a notice from uh, DEQ on April 16th. Our field guy, uh, Mr. Dennis Ryan, he's an environmental engineer the Southwest Michigan District sent us a violation notice. It came as a shock to me. I knew he wanted us to do some things. He's wanted us to do things for several years, such as the generator. And some of you guys have been sewer commissioner before. You know what was on the table. Um, but it surprised me that we got a violation. I think the last notice would have been, uh, I have it in my bag if you really want to know, would have been probably back in 07. I think Dave Coleman got it. It was a compliance evaluation, and it said do the decant and the lead to. But we did, though. And, and we did. But I'm saying it was a compliance evaluation. Yeah. They came out and looked. This is what was wrong. The village of Ramita fixed it. And I think that we did what we were yeah. supposed to. That's exactly right. So I was ex kind of expecting a similar thing, but to get a violation notice, it, it, it shocked me, and it kind of disappointed me. Um, I think there would have been a better way of handling it, but I don't get that the final say in it. He did reference what the violation is for, and it be page four in your guys' uh, packet. It's labeled at the top, it says part two. This is our permit, uh, section D, item three, facilities operation. The permittee shall at all times properly operate and maintain all treatment or control facilities or systems installed or used by the permittee to achieve compliance with the terms and conditions of this permit. Proper operation and maintenance includes adequate laboratory controls, and appropriate quality assurance procedures. I don't know what we violated on that. <laughs> we haven't exceeded anything. We, haven't, we don't have any violations. Um, you know, I, I was kind of stuck. So I, I, mean, I, I drafted yeah. a four-page response, and I, I said, you know what? I don't know if our best interest of the village is to fight it. What he wants done is the same thing he wanted done for at least three years now. He wants the generator. He uh, has, I, I did tour the Romeo plant. The Romeo plant looks very nice. It's clean. Um, they have a lot more money. They have more users. They have an industrial area. They have four employees. We're not Romeo when, in comparison. Um, I'm losing my train of thought today. So my first thought was to, you think he wants us to have a new, we have a generator. We don't have an auto an e, ATD uh, AS, what is it? automatic switch. So how much does that? I don't know. That doesn't automatic cost that transfer much. Switch. Yeah, yeah, that's that an ATS automatic transfer. The actual switch doesn't. I tried right. the plant with the operators. 
What's going to be costly is taking the old fuse boxes or the circuit breakers, whatever they're called, the gray things. I don't know if any of you have ever been in that room. Currently, they have to go in and take a key out and move the key over. It's a uh, fail safe way of doing it so that nobody gets electrocuted and we don't spike back at the transformer from our load um, if we switch to a generator. That's where it's going to be costly. I did talk to a, a contractor that's a friend of mine, and I talked to an Edison guy that's a friend of mine. He said that's where your money's going to be, is in that whole issue. The actual switch, I think Romeo told me they paid maybe 10, 13,000 for it. So that's not where the problem is. The problem is retrofitting our system. Can we use our fund for that? Well, yeah, they, yeah, it's, it's, you can, it's you couldn't while the bond was still in effect, you can now. There, there are some other things that uh, was, were identified in the United Water Report, was an internal document. Um, some house cleaning items, you know, a couple of, you know, one electrical box is corroded. Okay, we'll get that fixed, and that's what we're going to do. With, you know, one of these rooms, there's some miscellaneous junk laying around. We're going to clean that all up. And they've already done a lot of these things, um, the landscaping. And nothing to do with the operation of the plan. They make us dump too much into the creek, we didn't exceed any limits, but we're going to get it ready. It's, the landscaping's already done. So there's items like that that um, we're going to address. What he wants us to do, uh, the DEQ or the state loan, uh, it's called an SRF loan, they have too much money. Nobody's using the money because people don't have the money to pay back on the loans. So the, I think, my opinion is they're getting pressure to, to get people to start using up these loans or the, or the feds are going to be saying something like you're not going to get them in the future it's kind of i think the dq is being pressured and thus now we're getting a little pressure so what he's asking us to do is to go and do the s2 grant i know i've mentioned it before i've talked to giffles i actually talked with um, fleece and vanderbrink um, another guy talked to me who handles the romeo one it's a 90 10 grant and, and you have some information on it from Jonathan Berman up in, in Lansing. And we apply for the grant, we pay 10%, they pay 90. And they do a complete study of, if you can see the violation of the sewer system and the sewer plant. And it tells all the deficiencies and what would need to be done to get it up to speed. And from there, we're gonna to have to identify what we want to do. Um, we can go out for a loan if the cost is expensive. We can pay from our equipment replacement fund, or we don't do all the things that are suggested. There is a risk if we don't do, they wouldn't give me a set percentage, but if we don't do enough, then it's possible we would have to pay back the 90%. It's possible. You have three years to do X amount of work, and there's no set percentage given to me, but they do want some things done. And at first, I didn't want to spend the money. I don't want to impact the village taxpayers any more than we have to. I mean, none of us do, right? I mean, it's, it's hard to even improve any decrease um, in March. Um, but we're already going to do some street mining when we do the Main Street project, which would then be part of this money that we have to spend. And going this route, the grant will pay for some of the design some of the upfront costs. The planning costs. Planning. Thank you, Scott. So some of these costs will then be paid for by the grant. Um, another thing that he wants done is, and you guys have been down there, is that old building from the 40s. Mm -hmm. It's falling apart. There's actually bricks falling down. The old retention basin is actually falling in. Half the cement is probably gone. The old building, you're talking about the 10 cent barn? No, no, no. no. Oh, so right. it's in the sewer plant. Okay. Well, you say there. the old building. Yeah. Like, oh, man, that can't go. <laughs> so he did suggest that we remove that and fill in the, the retention pond, or retention, I shouldn't say pond, retention basin, the old one. So there's some work that needs to be done there. We don't have the cash to do it right now, all those things. This would allow us to figure out what really needs to be done, possibly get a loan, and, and pay over a 20 year period. So the study would prioritize. It sure would. It would identify also what's, what needs to be done. Because he can tell us what needs to be done. I can tell you what needs to be done. 
in my opinion. Dave has his ideas from when he was the sewer commissioner, Steve, you know, anybody else who was out there has their own ideas. But this would give somebody who knows what they're doing saying what needs to be done. We can fight it. You know, you can go that avenue also. Um, I did talk to Jeff about this. Um, he did give me, you know, what the what if scenarios. Um, and he did not say this, Jeff did not say this, but you know, the DEQ, if we fight them, they could come down harder on us. You know, they, they could then, on something else, say, well, we don't like this, so now you gotta fix this. So it could be a never ending thing, and I don't wanna jeopardize the village just because of, of not wanting to do a study. And, and he did send me an email, and it said, um, I don't have it out here in front of me, but it said basically you're gonna get it done anyway. You know, it's one, be, one, one problem I've got here for the paperwork, the village must present to the DEQ on or before June 15th, 2012, and approve of the work. That's really soon. I mean, for us to come up with a plan. Yeah, you know, but if you can talk to Ryan, problem. you could probably get that extended. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I could see him and I'll be happy. I, I told him I would send him a response because yeah. I haven't responded. I had a four page response. I'm going to shrink that down, <laughs> hopefully. I would um, like considerably more time to investigate yeah. before we jump into something just because we think we've got this deadline. He wants, I think what would be happy for him would be for him to know that we are going to look into the S2 grant and that uh, the village is not against looking into it. And then the other things that we are already addressing. I mean, this caught me by surprise too. It's like, here we're thinking right. we have a fairly decent sewer plant. The way it's been running. Right. And then like this, it's just. I you agree. Got, you've got major cities that are polluting. Well, that are not doing squat. Right. Here we're meeting all our requirements, but they like to flex their muscles. Well, we've separated our, our sewers. Yes. Communities such as Detroit that have it, and they have a big rain event, and they pump millions and millions of gallons exactly. of raw sewage. Right. So does Pontiac and the Detroit. And just to be clear, we haven't exceeded any. Right. You know, and, and that's why I think if we've had problems over the last in three and a half years that I've been sewer commissioner, I could understand coming down hard on us, but we haven't. Uh, the one thing we had was when the creek overflowed into our facility. And they one pipe. Somebody needs to move that pipe and it's not on our property. You know, uh, there was one where there was a high rain event and one of our switches got stuck. Again, it wasn't that our plant wasn't capable of handling the rain. So you have two different motions on there, either to request a proposal from Giffels or to, we don't wish to participate in it, in which case that would be your responsible. Is that correct? That is correct. I need a direction. I don't want to speak for the whole village. I think what you're doing is, is great in your idea of of um, having, having the system for the 90-10 grant. Yes, that's the S2 grant. And, and this is a proposal that Giffels will give us a price on what they think it's going to cost to, to do this? It's got to give me a ballpark. Um, can I say it was, it could be 50, maybe 100,000 total to do an S2 grant, um, the whole S2 grant. So we would be liable for five to $10,000. Yeah, when Roe did a study back in 06, I believe the village paid $8,000 for just um, the system. Just the system. I don't think they did the plan. Yeah, it, it just varies on it. My fault. Probably should sit down with you and kind of go through some of the scope items or even go through right. the plan itself and get a better grasp of what that scope was. This guy hasn't been to the plan yet. This was at early stages of trying to figure out which direction. Yeah, that's just something like to set that, that study, you're right, it would be a lot. The cost then, you know, it's just all dependent upon what kind of scope and the uh, overall extent of the Correct. study. So basically Mike is looking for someone to make a motion, either for, or if Mike wants to make one himself, to request a proposal or we don't wish to participate. Someone want to make I'll a I'll make a motion because I am the commissioner. Okay, that's person. fine. Resolved to allow a sewer commissioner to to request a proposal from Giffels Webster to prepare an S2 grant. Motion by Mr. Stewart. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Conan. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. I will draft a response to the next round. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Next agenda item, Air Advantage Cell Tower Certificate of Insurance. Are there any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none, this is Planning Commission Liaison, Mr. Sturitz, agenda item. Madam President, I might have to refer to the Planning Chair, Ben Zalecki, on a couple items if I, if I mess something up, because I'm trying to go from memory. Um, Air Advantage is time, uh, Air Advantage, I have the, the drawings right here, so I don't want to mess up the means. A representative from SMJ came to us uh, as a representative of Air Advantage. Air Advantage is putting wireless internet to uh, many country into the rural area. They tagged our tower. They've already done KPAC, Richmond. They've done a lot of the communities out this way. Maybe not KPAC, Inley City was definitely what they did say. They're basically going to put something on top of our tower. A couple years back, we approved the cell tower agreement. We extended the agreement with um, somebody else. Mm -hmm. Was it American? No, American Tower. We get now. American Tower. We extend with American Tower. No, we extend with American Tower. We we big top or something. Big top events. Uh, anyway. Okay. Well, we have an agreement. Please. And they would like to put something on our tower. The Planning Commission approved it with some uh, stipulations. I believe most of the stipulations should not be a problem to meet. Just to make sure they have a, a, um, a certificate of insurance is the one that I'm bringing back to you guys. Uh, council has the authority on whether or not we have a cash bond to be certain that they do have insurance. Um, it's in our ordinance, correct? Right. And that's that's kind of true, but. The way it was stated was that whatever the original cell tower held, whatever the original cell tower um, operator insurance certificate was, that's the way Air Advantage was. So it wasn't that we were going to post a cash bond or a surety bond, but after talking with Mr. Pahorsky, it, it's a surety bond, correct? Uh, that the other cell tower has. So if we were just. I at the planning remember, commission level, I'd have to ask Joe if we ever. I don't. I'm not, I don't think we have a cash bond. No, no. no I, 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 right. I, I thought it was a surety bond. Okay, a surety bond. Yeah. But do we? We have to look at the other ones, which are sprints, right? But I thought you already did that. Because we checked that there was four things. I checked everything else was in. So one of them was uh, a maintenance agreement. One of them was a removal agreement, and a landscaping mm -hmm. agreement and all those are in the original agreement so all those are fine so the only one that was going to really be uh, air advantage specific was the insurance one and that was to be whatever the original agreement was they were just going to buy by the same type of a policy same type of a request so unfortunately the appendix I didn't get the appendix which covers insurance but <coughs> they are required to provide both the owner and this new company that wants to co-locate have to provide insurance. That's what their agreement says. And of course, in our lease with, originally I think it was Detroit Tower, and now it's American. It's American Tower. Now it's American, they sold off the tower. Um, they obviously have to provide insurance per their agreement. We don't have an agreement with American, I'm sorry, with Air Advantage. Okay. Just so everybody's clear, our only agreement is with the current owner of the tower. So, um, if we have the ability to ask, request it, I, you know, it doesn't hurt. But you know, I really don't know at this point where this requirement is coming from. To be honest with you. Okay. Well, what I understood was to make sure that they had the certificate of insurance. So right. if it lapsed, then there's money that we would get right. to prevent, to try to make them not let it last. Right. I personally don't want to charge them money for this. That's my personal opinion because we're already getting money on the tower. If they don't have insurance, then we have we have the ability to cut them off, correct? I don't think so. No, we have no, we, we have no agreement with, other than the oh. zoning approval. Okay. If it's coming from the zoning and the planner is telling you you can require this. I'm good with it. I'm just saying we don't have a separate agreement with this company. Okay. I'm assuming the planner flagged this. Is that right, Ben? Correct. And said you can require this, but this is coming through the zoning, 
not through any type of agreement with Air Advantage. Okay. Okay. But it said the council has to make the decision. So council needs to decide, correct, if we're going to do anything. I'm assuming, again, I'm assuming she's, that's her recommendation. I, I thought it was pretty much all handled with our conversation the day after the meeting. But I put this on because I, at the meeting, yeah, I was given to me. So. <clears throat> again, if, did this get approved with conditions, Ben? Yeah, the four conditions. You and I had this conversation. It was, it was approved with the conditions, and the conditions were just that they stated that they had the maintenance agreement, they had this, and all and this. And then remember, I called and I said, it, it's, so if this is in the tower agreement, then we really don't have to request this of them because the tower agreement would superimpose their thing. So it would just be the only other thing that the only issue was really the insurance issue. So. So the question then is, does the village currently have a uh, cash bond or surety in place with American Tower? I honestly don't know. I, no cash bond. Yeah, I know that. I know. Is yeah, yeah, it a surety bond? I, I was under the impression that we had a surety bond with them, just through American Tower with the original lease agreement. But as far as anybody else is tagging on, I don't think, I think, I think what Ben's saying though is if, if well, that bond is posted, or I should say, if that surety bond is posted, we don't need to require air advantage. To Correct. Post. Yeah. Okay. If, if, if it's in the original agreement with the tower and the tower is going to take uh, the liability of all the other people, all the, tag, all the other tags, then, then air advantage doesn't need to do anything other than. So, so I don't know necessarily whether you need council action tonight, other than if Joe, if you can go yeah, through your paperwork. And if it's there, we're good. If it's not there, we'll. I, I, so there doesn't need to be a council approval of, of this action by planning? No. Okay. Not, okay. Unless, again, if it's not there, then we may have to. So then on that approval letter, we just write no council does not need to take action. Okay. okay. Well, it, it, it really wasn't on there that they did have to take action. The, the question was on, on the. On the Stipulations. Okay. Sorry any to bother other, you guys. Any other <laughs> questions? Okay, moving on. Next agenda item: Trailhead McComb Orchard Trail meeting update. Any public comments? Any public comments? Hearing none. This is my agenda item, and Mr. Ben Delucky. Uh, Mr. Delucky was going to give us more information from a county meeting that he had with regard to the trailhead. Okay. So as it stands now. I come in and, and apprise you about all the meetings that I've had. As it stands now, the trail, um, there's McComb Orchard Trail, uh, wants to enter into an agreement with the village. So that they don't want to do anything with the trailhead. Uh, they pretty much washed their hands, even though they came here and said that they were going to fund the whole thing and they were going to do it and there was their project. Well, now they've backed off of that. They don't want to do anything. So they want to, um, and I offered to do it. And they said, well, you can't do it. And then uh, they said, okay. And then Don Brown said, well, the only way you could do it is if we uh, lease that section of the trail property to the village. So that lease was uh, proposed at $1 per year for 20 years. So now the request is to uh, let the trail attorney, Jill Smith, and uh, Mr. Bohorski enter into an agreement uh, for that uh, trailhead. So that's the request at this point in time. So if that can happen, and then the two attorneys can come up with an agreement, then it would be up to the Trail Commission and this board to vote on those agreements. Do you have any idea how much this would cost, Jeff? I honestly don't. Um, one of the reasons that, uh, that I think Ben is here tonight is we didn't want to incur any expenditures until the council was comfortable with the concept. The, the, the trail, as Ben said, their biggest concern is they don't want to commit to a main, you know, to maintaining this. I don't think they have any problem with the improvements being made. They just didn't want to make a long-term financial commitment to taking care of this. So 
uh, their solution is to enter a lease. Ben gave you the terms, a dollar for, for 20 years. Uh, you know, so the improvements would be made and the village would then be responsible for maintaining the area. And uh, Ben, I'm sure you feel it's probably pretty low maintenance based on your design. Well, the village already does some of the maintenance. So the, the, the driveway into the sewage treatment plant, that's, you already maintain that. That's gonna be the driveway to the parking area. Um, the, the trail commission uh, cuts the, they don't cut the grass around that parking area, but the elevator does. And I don't know how long the elevators cut the grass there, but it was well before I've been here at the 81. So I asked if they would continue to cut the grass, and they said yes. So uh, what's left for the uh, village and the maintenance is kind of just to uh, pick up the slack if somebody, if somebody drops the ball. So as far as the, the maintenance agreement, as far as cutting the grass, you know, it, it, it's going to kind of have to be policed, you know, a little bit as far as uh, trash, you know, if you're going to have a parking area, there's going to be a little trash thrown around. Um, well, they're parking there now, right? Exactly. Well, so they just let it go like it is them not doing <laughs> anything. Well, because they're parking all over the place. So yes, some people park there, 10% of the people park there, 90% of the people park elsewhere. Some are parking on my roads this week. Yeah, yeah, they're parking all over. Ben, are you still contemplating uh, taking out the grass and putting gravel in, or I or just I, signage I, to say this is where parking is? No, um, it, it was um, the last meeting, not the last meeting, the meeting before. Uh, one of the members, uh, John Crumbs, was instructed to give me. Uh, plans uh, for the parking area. So I didn't get plans for parking area. What I got was information on excuse me, what materials to use and how much it was going to cost. So those are the plans. So now, uh, with a, a conversation I had with uh, President Cooper today, I'm supposed to abide by those plans and uh, have a county. Um, inspector there uh, throughout the project. Well, I never envisioned any of this because I was going to do it all with kind of volunteer help, a lot of it on the weekends, and that kind of throws the the, um, uh, the the inspector out. So really, quite frankly, until we find out just exactly what they want, because until this afternoon, that's the first time I heard of that. Because it says in here that you have to have a construction person there approving quantities, approving the layout, or will be in violation of our lease agreement, which we don't even have that. Yeah. So, I'm. Ben, you're not. Are you still thinking about putting restrooms down there? Well, that was never that was never my thing. No. That okay. was that was that was a that was a discussion that was made here or that was had here at the council that uh, eventually that would happen. Really, you know. It, my office window looks at the trail. So as I'm doing paperwork and doing bids or doing whatever, I see the activity on the trail. And since the trail's been paved, it's, it's just tenfold the amount of traffic. So then with that traffic came a lot of people parking in the area. So, I mean, they're kind of, they're parking all over. They're, you know, they're, why did you, because you were talking about maintenance, I just wanted to be well, sure that Well, eventually, I mean, the long-range plans are huge. And even the council said that they wanted to do things, you know, maybe something with the well site, you know, or, or the tower site, you know. So that's that's all in the future. Right now, really, all I'm wanting to do is create a parking lot, a designated parking lot, and uh, some park benches. Um, the parking lot, uh, the, the approved parking lot for the... Uh, uh, it was going to be crushed stone or limestone, but some kind of crushed stone. Um, my suggestion was to use railroad, old railroad ties as the parking bumpers. The trail commission liked that, so they pretty much liked everything that I had to, that I presented. Um, but as far as the plans, I've never seen any. So, but now it's kind of, the, it, and as Mr. Bohorsky said, nothing was really said about the construction of it before. They just said that um, 
if the village takes it on, then the village can take on the insurance deals, uh, the construction project. They didn't want to have anything to do with it. So with your um, insurance policies, everybody that would be on it would either sign a waiver, or if you're a business person like I am, we just give you insurance tickets. So, so this email that we received from Jill Smith basically says that the department construction review person come out, explain the construction, they're to be out in the field to make sure the belt parking lot is built correctly. It's built to Macomb County Department of Road specifications. And then when constructed, um, someone must call and request a construction engineer to be present to review and approve the construction. I'm not sure if there is a charge for that. They said John, um, who's John Crum from the um, Macomb County Roads, he is more than willing to come and meet with us to make sure we understand what we must do so we're not in violation of a lease agreement. Um, so it's, it's up to us on council as to whether we want to go ahead with this, if we want Jeff to start talking to their attorney, or whether we want John Crum to come here and talk to us, in which, in my opinion, having John Crum come here to talk to us won't cost us anything. Having Jeff talk to their attorney is going to cost us money. That's my opinion. I'm not sure what anyone else's opinion is. I think it's a good starting point. Okay. So if that's okay with council, I'll get in touch with John Crum and then try to see um, if he can make it to our first meeting in June. He can come here, and Mr. Galecki, you're, if you want to come already too. come here and told you. <laughs> I understand, would. but I mean, I'll let him know that we are looking at the lease. If he can bring us information on that as well. We're trying to alleviate as many costs as possible and not getting legal involved until we have to. At least right now, we're just on a fact-finding mission to find out what the costs are, what the recommendations are, and what the Macomb, even what the Macomb County Department of Road specifications are. They might not allow crushed concrete. They might have asphalt record. I don't know. That's well, I've already I'm got that. That's a, that's approved. You said that I have plans. I told you I don't. Not, I do not have plans, but I have a list of materials. Right. So the list of materials is brushed stone. Okay. The list of materials is bumper ties, railroad ties for bumper blocks. Do you know if there's a cost for all these construction review people to be out here? I, as of as I said, that conversation I have never privy to, nor do I have any documentation as of such. Okay. So I think we I need to get in touch with John Crum and find out, and then I can bring everyone an update. I might not have it by next week, but I can have it for our first meeting in June if that's okay with everyone. Unless you guys just want Jeff to start talking to their attorney, that's up to you as well. Well, how about asking Jeff to come up with an idea how much it's going to cost to do this? I just asked him. Well, <laughs> I mean, that can't be that hard. I mean, I don't think it'll be a... Um, I don't think it's going to be that costly. Well, I, again, I... Even if it's five hundred dollars, I just want to make sure the council wants this. You know, you have to tell me that you're ready to go forward, and I just don't. You know, it's up to you whether you're ready to do. I personally would like a little more information first. Find out what violates their lease agreement, and find out what their specific. I know you have their specifications, but to find out to have all these construction people come out, is are they going to bill us for that? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Else? That sounds good to me. Uh, if you want to contact me, okay. I mean, another week is not going to delay this a whole lot. I mean, no, I mean, I have his phone number, so I just have to call him as long as it's available. These guys are something else. Yes. They come here, they're going to do everything, and they don't want to do anything, and they, they you know, give them a hard time. Right. I like the lease price, though, a dollar per year. That sounds really nice. That does. Appealing. We shouldn't even be paying a dollar. We're the one that's doing something or been there. Maybe we can return all the pop bottles that are at the parking lot <coughs> and or see or generate a dollar. Anyone else have any other discussion on that? Are we going to put okay. that up for the next meeting? Yep, upcoming agenda item. Uh, well, I will, let me see if I can even get him up because it's going to have to be on Wednesday. So I don't know what I have. I can try to get in touch with him on Wednesday. So are there any other upcoming agenda items that anyone knows about? Well, we need to bring up the special event policy stuff. So. Okay. Do we want to get with Mr. Ballard on the um, flood lighting installation code since it is only a three-day delivery on that? Yeah. 
But we don't have that should be an amendment. But we'll need to make an, a motion by council to approve the money to put in the installation. It's under 500. Right, but he can let us know or right take here. it off. Any other upcoming agenda items? Hearing none, any citizen comments? Yes, Mr. Delenke. Well, I have a few. One, uh, Mr. Delenke asked if I would ask a question for him. Okay. So this pertain, pertains to the fair board. So um, uh, one of the, um, I don't have the uh, paperwork, but there was one item in there that uh, some wording said impact public property. Well, if the fair holds an event, people are using the roads. So does that indicate that the fair has to do something? Because, because it was said that they didn't have to do anything because they're doing it on private property. It but now this issue. wording said it impact public property, public property, i.e. the roads. Mm -hmm. So what would be that ruling? So the oh, fair. We're gonna, okay. gotcha. the, the idea back at the very beginning was to identify events that were going to impact the community beyond the normal police routine. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's hard to argue that the fair doesn't impact this community understood you know so that's why he's asking for a group. right so it looks like the item's coming back and we can review that and tweak it if necessary but as originally drafted it was intended to identify things that were going to require the bills to expend more than they normally would in other words bringing additional police officers um dpw you know putting up barricades things like that so but you while he was here you specifically said that he, he didn't did have to come in it. because that that was on private property. We did not all say that then, and there was no motion directly related to that. Okay. We said we'd bring it back for further discussion. Okay, so I'll discussion. tell him that it, he's still, it, it's still up in the air. Okay. Yes. So now we're, we're going into my questions, I think. Okay. Okay. So the the indemnification thing, I, I don't know, uh, Mr. Audi is fully aware of what it is, but um, the, the small groups, the small uh, things like the ABA, that's going to put us out of any type of a um, any type of an activity. We don't have insurance, let alone we have an indemnity thing. And if you co-insure somebody or have some a, a rider, I mean, I personally have been in business for many years. I lost my insurance policy once, and Mr. Roddy's company uh, actually uh, it, at an increase of ten thousand dollars a year, I got more insurance, and it was all over co-insuring a government body. I was asked to do that. I lost the insurance coverage that I had. I had to pick up new insurance coverage. Sure, I was able to do it, but it cost me $10,000 a year more. So that's that's something to look at. And Armada is made up of small groups that do all kinds of little things. And do you really want to minimize that? Okay. Thank Is that you. it? All right. Any other citizen comments? Any other citizen comments? Any council comments? Dennis, I had one. Floral Street was looking pretty bad. Are we going to take it to people that have the grass that's, you know, knee high? What was the problem? Floral Street. There yeah. are a couple of uh, homes that have grass that's knee high. Are we going to uh, cut We probably or? sent out about a dozen letters in the last 10 days. Which, if you have a specific piece of property, we can pull the file and see okay. if that's going to trust. If you can, Mr. Hart, you can do that through the noxious view payment. Yep. And, and cut it and then, you know, leave the property. So it's, you don't have to wait, you know, once the notice is changed. Yeah, at what point do we go out and cut it and do this? That's through the code enforcement. Um, I think, Dennis, do you give them 10 days? 10 days. 10 days, correct. And then, and then, the, then you can, you know, get the grass cut. They and notify the cutter. Actually, we've had the contractor cut several times this year. I'm thinking six or seven times. There are two on that street that are pretty Bad. Yeah, again, after the meeting, yeah, you pull the file yeah. and there, there's a, there about a dozen letters on all. Okay. Any other council comments? Hearing none, any community events? Yes. Uh, my name is Chris Kerr. I'm 14 years old and I'm a Boy Scout. I'm currently working towards earning their highest rank in scouting, Eagle Scout. And uh, I'm doing my Eagle Scout service project here at St. Mary's in Armada. Um, so I came here to ask all of you um, if you'd like to join me this weekend, Saturday. I'm working from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, this is the largest Eagle Scout project ever to be approved in the state of Michigan, and um, it's now getting national attention. 
So I'm trying to get everybody involved. Um, so basically what it is, it's a Stations of the Cross pathway. Um, the church owns a um, nine acre plot behind the church and it'll go through there and it's about a quarter mile long. Um, so I just wanted to invite you all to come out this weekend and uh, help out. Thank you. How much church? Uh, St. Mary's, it's right next to the fairgrounds, Catholic Church. I'm sorry, did we bring anything? What, what, what will be going on? There? Work gloves and rakes, really. Just your regular lawn rake and work gloves. So it's kind of like a clean up? Yeah, we're just going through the trail and cleaning up, you know, just raking up the leaves into piles, getting the sticks off the ground and then lining the trail, just so we can get everything um, out there. Is there a certain age limit for people who can help you? Everybody from all ages, any okay. people that do everything, you know. You got an art pair. How are your how are your sponsorships going? Uh, pretty good. Um, looking for sponsors too. So I have brochures here if you're interested in taking a, a closer look. Thank you. Thank you. Any other community events? Um, oh, you know, I should have said under council comments we should remind the public that our next meeting is next Monday. I know we've said it several times tonight, but um, because the following Monday is Memorial Day. So our next meeting is the 21st. Yeah, we, we changed that. That's our separate meeting dates. Okay. We don't have a closed session tonight. The time is now 9.05. Is there a motion so to adjourn? Motion by Mr. Audie. Is there a second? Support. Support by Mr. Wallach. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.